this is the new seal it's from Chen Ming seal it will be mounted like this there's two lips that keep the fluid out and one excluder lip to keep the debris that are in the motor from coming into the seal alternatively you can try this seal looks like this it is the material is a fluor flu, fluoro rubber fluoro rubber uh, it is designed to be lubricated with grease or oil in our case we don't have that we only have like coolant so will it work better or worse than the, the Chen Ming we don't know the this one is rated for 12,000 12 and a half thousand rpm so that's pretty high but I'm going to start with the Chen Ming seal and see what happens the seals come with a protective sleeve the problem is the protective sleeve outer diameter is 28 and a half millimeter while the shaft outer diameter is 30 millimeter so we have to first get a better idea of the geometry of the lips after we put the seal on the shaft because there's very little space before you try to fit the seal on the shaft clean the shaft completely with something that uh, leaves no traces uh, in my case acetone i damaged this seal while mounting it so what happened i uh, tried to push it on and then the excluder lip over here it folded partially back leaving two permanent nicks there and there so what is better is when before you mount it you try to uh, expand the diameter of the excluder lip so imagine just for the camera it's better to do it like this that imagine this is the shaft then you just uh, push the lip out like this in all directions in all positions along the circumference and, and after that it is much easier as you can see to mount it there now imagine doing that prep work while the seal is already mounted in the manifold and then, then assembling everything that is much much harder also one handbook from a seal manufacturer stated that it is quite normal for a beginner to uh, damage and ruin a bunch of seals before you uh, get it right so uh, maybe it's a good idea to order multiple we can measure the distance from the lip edge over here to this seal surface over here in axial direction we can do the same for the excluder on this side from the, the edge of the excluder to the uh, the seal face over here if you look closely you can see different reflective properties along the shaft for example between here and here the shaft has been polished by contact with the old seal we're going to measure the distance between the shaft end and the start and the end of that region this is the original seal we see that the born region, the polished region, goes from here to here and do not, does not fully, fully coincide with the seal, which is here. Maybe that's because of accumulated measurement errors, or maybe the shaft has some thermal expansion sometimes, so then the shaft moves to the left relative to the seal, so then it matches better, or maybe it's an assembly um, deviation. This is the new seal. We measure that there's only half a millimeter left between this lip, lip edge and the edge over here and just one millimeter left between the excluder edge over here and this edge over here and also for the the, the, the middle lip that uh, unfortunately overlaps with the polished region and that means that uh, ideally we have to uh, make this polished region uh, a little bit rougher so what is the ideal surface roughness for a teflon seal we have two sources here parker and trelleborg they say it has to be between these lines so roughly 0.15 micrometer so what sandpaper can you use for that well a bunch of people have done experiments there's a lot of spread but we could say in our case we just take 600 grit sandpaper and we hope we are somewhere in this region over here maybe it's too coarse so we take a second step with 1500 grit sandpaper to uh, shave off the tops of the rough uh, peaks and then uh, hopefully it will be good because ideally uh, seals like this kind of geometry you see over here 
So I built a little wooden jig to uh, so we can spin the rotor. Simultaneously I put uh, 600 grit sandpaper over here. It's very important to do something like this. If you just do it by hand, you can accidentally move your hands a little bit in actual direction and you will create a helix or lead. And that is very bad according to some uh, documents from manufacturers that advise on this kind of stuff. So that's why we do it this way. Here we go. Next we polish it with uh, 1500 grit. So I'm not sure if it's better or worse, it's for sure different. Here is the result, left the original, center shows after 600 grit, right after polishing with 1500 grit. Next with a, a razor knife I cut out uh, some samples and then uh, removed the cut out samples. And I have one, two, three, four, six samples and I measure the thickness. Uh, I measured the thickness at two locations. I measured the thickness where it was right here and where the lip touched the shaft. So the measurement was 1.0 millimeter. That's the original thickness and then the thickness where it touched the shaft is 0.95. And just to make sure that I did not make a measurement error or something like that, I'm sure I'm making error hopefully small enough. I repeated it six times and it's pretty consistent. So the, there seems to be 50 micrometer of wear along the inner circumference where the shaft touched the seal. Does 50 micron of measured seal lip wear mean that the lip is worn out? And is this wear normal? I could not find direct comparison data to make a hard statement about this. I did find this graph showing that PTFE seals require accuracies in the shown orders of magnitude for relatively low RPMs. The measured amount of wear seems to fit well in this order of magnitude. From that perspective, the seal may be simply worn out. Given the conservative driving behavior during its life and maintenance by the book, I would say that this is normal wear for this seal design. Note the concentric cuts in the seal lip. My assumption is that these were added to reduce the lip bending stiffness, in turn reducing the pressure on the lip and shaft. This may have reduced the rate of seal wear at the cost of sealing effectiveness, but I'm not sure. Also note that I assume an initial uniform lip thickness of 1mm at manufacturing of the seal. Here are measurements that support the statement that the cuts are concentric and so they have no lead, meaning that they are not a helix or a spiral, so they do not pump coolant back. Let me show how tight the seal is. So I made a black mark there on the seal. The seal does not touch the wood. The rotor is 60 pounds, so when I rotate it, grabbing the seal, then the rotor will just rotate with it. So that shows how tight the seal is only when I move very fast. There you go, it's a dang tight seal. To make sure that the seal will not uh, leak on the outside between the seal and the manifold, I put some uh, uh, Permatex Ultra Black along the perimeter before I uh, push the seal in. It's a bit uh, tricky to apply it with this uh, dispenser in one go. We're going to uh, hammer the seal in. Make 
sure it's the right orientation. Put it in there. Piece of cardboard. Hammer. Okay, rubber hammer plus a piece of cardboard, uh, no matter how thick it is, I guess, with the epoxy even. Yeah, that was destroyed, so that's not good. So now I take a piece of hard wood and a uh, bigger metal hammer, and then it goes in slowly. that required quite some violence I even made a new stick I did not dare putting it on camera apparently but uh, this shape and then put it here before every pounding make sure that the stick is not touching the lip otherwise you will damage it well most likely and now it's in so it's um, uh, it looks pretty good If you know the original seal manufacturer or if you have a better idea about uh, replacing the seal, please let me know in the comments below.